I don't know, I really like him a lot. And I, he seemed to be able to combat Norman Finkelstein. Oh. And they would go back and back and forth. Even when he talks about anti-Semitism, I don't agree with him. I don't like to, you know, he defends anti-Semites you know, to have freedom of speech. Not in our name. No genocide in Gaza. He defends anti-Semites to have freedom of speech. But I don't. I believe in the Canadian uh, criminal code, which uh, makes a hate speech uh, criminal. And anti-Semitism is a criminal uh, attack upon people and should be treated as such. But he doesn't believe that. He's so American. Completely different kind of a mentality. I'm an American. Yeah. Yeah. But Americans, you know, are taught to believe in the freedom of absolute freedom of speech. You know, and you know, racism all of a sudden, you know, is like protected by the Constitution. You know. Yeah, like, but you know what's funny? I, to my uh, my grandpa, he's a Columbia alumni. He he's in something with like some pass anti-Semitism task force, and he talks to people. What's so incredible? I don't know if it was specifically in Columbia, but there are a lot of colleges. Actually, get in trouble for calling someone the wrong pronouns, but then if you, but then if you're an anti-Semite and say anti-Semitic things, it's, it depends on the context or whatever. Huh. So. Well, it's because those people who are saying those things, you know, sometimes they say things that are anti-Semitic and they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. they're like, okay, there was when you call for. Okay, I, we can debate on this, but for the majority. The majority Intifada does, I would say, is just a call for genocide against Israel. Uh, no, the root meaning of Intifada is a rebellion, or could also be interpreted as, as holy... Bus, like uh, bombing restaurants and shoot, like all this... No, the, the other like sort of... A, the other meaning of it is a holy war, just like the Hebrew, Melchum Mitzvah. It's the same concept. They, they yeah, it's fundamentalist. Yeah, if I know. Some, if there was some term with Israel for some like if Israelis like walked into Palestinian restaurants and did the same things, so I would totally condemn that, and I don't think anyone should be calling for that either. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of the uh, some of the uh, suicide bombings and attacks have even killed Palestinians. Yeah. <laughs> like they, I mean, they, they. I don't. I guess because they also killed uh, Muslims on October seventh too. So. Yeah, probably. And they kidnapped, like, what's it, I guess, I don't know. But I'm not so sorry about the soldiers who were killed, because they're the ones who were sniping all the peaceful demonstrators during the Great March of Return two years ago. I hated those guys. Well, you're saying you hate every single IDF soldier? Because no, the snipers. Oh, the snipers? Yeah, in particular. You know, killing civilians, you know? And like the nurse? Well, I forget her name now, you know, she was shot? No. Those guys, you know, I, I don't care about them. Yeah. Oh, and what are But the rest of the soldiers, you know, they're so naive. You know, they, these 18 and 19 year olds, you know, like, who don't know what they're doing. They're just following orders, you know, like. Yeah, I, it's crazy. My friend, in three years, he's going to be in the army. Like, oh. Uh, um, but he's a very good person, so. If they refuse, they get uh, prison time for maybe six months at a maximum or three months. Not so bad. I don't think, I, uh, maybe not all orders in the IDF are ethical, but I think it is important. Because, like, in South Korea, uh, army, army, uh, I forget what's the term, but, um, like, it's mandatory to be in the army at a certain age, too. Because you have a country or an area right next to you that hates you. And yeah, but uh, our anti-war movement of the 60s, we abolished conscription. People refused well, to go into the, the military US after that. After the Vietnam War, that was, three million people were killed there. No. Um, so one well, what what argument I found interesting in the debate I watched was uh, so okay let's say okay so is the IDF the well, Orthodox are against conscription now they want to conscript the, the Orthodox no no way they're not going to go so, yeah no but yeah the no I, I mean or, I would say ultra Orthodox the Orthodox people are, are, are um, okay ultra Orthodox yeah, yeah but uh, so. So about the, um, they, they, they what uh, Yair Lapid said is, if you like leave Israel, you won't be able to find a job because most, I think, like more than fifty percent of them have no experience in anything and just studied in like. In yeah, the I know they have no them. skills. It's um, incredible. So they can't but they, their community would take care of them in New York. You there know, there have been some ultra orthodox who don't care and have been enlisting them. Uh huh. Um. Anyways, so the argument was, if the IDF. Uh, like bombs someplace, 
and like a military target and it kills like five people which is around like the average of, of no they're because like look the, i i know like i've seen the numbers i they're updated daily that's around every mom i'd say so every live loss is horrible okay but, um so you really think so for a bomb to go it has to go up all these chains of commands and they have to let it do it um if if for if you say if you say that those bombs are then meant to kill civilians you really think they would do all of that and then just kill like five people like all, spend so much money on a missile coordinate it goes up the chain well, of command it's it's, it's, it. it's all calculated it's they have a program an ai program called gospel which is a protestant name but they're, they're Protestants, I suppose, and the Zionists there. That's where they get the, the whole the whole Zionist idea of of a, of a, of, a, of a Jewish state from. It's is a Protestant idea. The Christian Zionists. Yeah, the Christian uh, 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 Protestants. They think that all Jews have to go back to Israel in order for <laughs> yeah, their king, their Zionist. God to come back. You know. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, oh, I forget. I'm so so tired. I forget my point. A, the, 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 uh, gospel, I'm fasting. The AI system. You fasting? What? For Ramadan with my Palestinian friends. Okay. Um, uh, well, I was I was talking about how there's such a there's a big chain of command for a missile to go. Oh yeah. yeah, the program that that chooses the sites for the bombings, it's called Gospel, yes. and it calculates you know the best places to hit. How? Because if somebody, you know, who's in Hamas has family members, then they go and they bomb the family members. If somebody is trying to, you know, get an internet connection, they'll bomb them because they figure they're trying to sort of, you know, you know, uh, do some sort of report about uh, nastiness. You know, they do it, you know, systematically. There's a reason for the bombings. It's not arbitrary. Because they're military targets. Because Hamas embeds themselves. It's, it's defined as military. Well, I mean. I mean, yeah, there are some things you know, where, like, they hide, it's a, like a, thought they hide crime. a couple of AKs in a building and then they have an excuse to bomb it. I don't totally agree with that, but the, the point is... Hamas it's thought, worse than that, you know. It's like a thought crime. If if they believe that you think like Hamas, they will kill you. Yeah, that's, that's bad, but um, what I'm... Okay, what I'm saying, there's, there was this case on the... I think it was on the beach or something. There was an, some military target next to it. Four children were killed. Yeah. I think the children were killed on purpose, all the way up the chain of command, and not because there was a military target right next to it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. See, my colleague, Rochelle Corey, she was crushed by a bulldozer. And, and my it, friend, who I worked with in Nablus, in 2003, he went to Rafa and he was shot in the head. Well, why? I mean... Because they were taking down the houses next to the border so that they couldn't build tunnels. Well, they didn't want tunnels to be built from the houses underneath the border into Egypt. So it's it's all military logic. Like Hamas, with all the money they got from all these funds. From Qatar, Qatar, yeah. Qatar, they could have built bomb shelters and stuff. They just built tunnels. And they don't even well, they only got you know Qatar only calculated the number, the amount of money they needed, you know, for hospitals and social services, and they didn't give them any more than that. Oh, uh, that's from Iran. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they really, they really, I don't, I don't, I'm not a military strategist or anything, so I don't know what would be the ideal way for the mosque to go and everything, but for what I'd like to do is, for like, the well-being and like the safety and of and the future of everyone, including Israelis and Palestinians, Hamas needs to go, because they're not getting Gaza anywhere, like, they're, they're the reason, the main reason that Gaza locked up from the rest of Egypt and uh, even if there was no Hamas you know the Palestinian people themselves would rather die than leave Gaza and go into Egypt what do you mean a lot of people who try to climb the border and then they get shot you know, some pay ten thousand dollars to get across the border to bribe the officials yeah but they don't uh, they refuse to be expelled like like in 1948 another Nakba yeah but here's the problem with that you so they say. So when they, when, when Israel says, "Oh, you, sh the, you should have been able to like leave to Egypt, and then not, not nearly as many of you have died," you say, "That's ethnic cleansing. You're trying to push them out of their home." And then when they die.